Greetings to all you backpackers and how you winter friends. It's good to be with you again and reporting on my first uh, 2013 backpack. Especially good as uh, a, for a few short months ago it looked like I was going to be a cripple. Uh, but no need to uh, fake not being a cripple anymore as you will see. And uh, I might add I don't walk like a penguin nor a duck anymore either. So let's get into this first uh, backpack of the season it was to be to the Grand Eddy Basin um, first going up uh, towards the uh, UNS up to the western end uh, entering uh, at one gateway to the UNS at Camas there uh, at the intersection turning right uh, going a couple of miles down to Francis and then turning left towards Woodland and uh, and then on up towards uh, the Wolf Creek Pass uh, stopping at a uh, at a rest area along the way, no buts, I believe it's called, um, where you're on a Highway 35, um, going uh, going up to Wolf Creek Pass, which uh, highway, of course, goes on over to uh, Hannah, Taviona, and down to Duchesne. Uh, but up at Wolf Creek Pass, you can see uh, uh, that there was basically no snow. Uh, we're talking about the 12th of June in 2013, and this compared to the 28th of June in uh, 2011, when uh, there was quite a bit of snow left. Uh, now back to reality, uh, 2013, and down the uh, the other side of Wolf Creek Pass, uh, and you come to the uh, uh, turnoff road uh, uh, to uh, the North Fork of the Duchesne River, uh, going up to DeFaze Dude Ranch, etc. Of course, the, uh, you keep on the highway and you go down to Hannah, Taviona, etc. But along the uh, North Fork of the Duchesne River, you can see uh, on the 12th of June in 2013 how it was, and this compared to the 28th of June in 2011 when it was a raging torrent. So you can see the vast difference. Uh, uh, this is going to be one awfully dry year, as you can see by the gauging by the river. Uh, then up uh, past the DeFay's Dude Ranch and up uh, toward the Hades Canyon, uh, looking down uh, into the valley at, in 2011, when, it, when there were the uh, DeFay's Dude Ranch and area down below was all uh, being flooded, uh, you keep going up the road at seven miles uh, to the trailhead. You can look down here on Lightning Ridge where we used to have to hike and then to, on to Splash Dam. Um, Along the way, uh, the, the main flower that you see early in the season uh, is called uh, wild uh, candy tuft. Uh, and, uh, and then you, uh, you get to this b great spring that comes gushing off the down off the side of the mountain uh, where we always get water. And then to the Grandview Trailhead, uh, and you can see a few cars in the, uh, in the parking lot there. And of course, I camped out that night. Uh, of course, another of the early flowers uh, in the winters are dandelions, which you see here, and there were deer all around. And, and the next morning, I got ready to head up the trail, and I was lucky to meet uh, Dan and his son, Sam. Uh, Dan was uh, taking Sam on his first backpack trip, and uh, they were excited about going into the mountains, uh, into the granddaddies, and maybe across to the Four Lakes Basin and back. And then I, of course, headed up the trail. Uh, I had about 40 pounds. I never weighed it, actually, but uh, 40 pounds on my back and around my waist. Uh, uh, much, uh, part of about 15 pounds of that was camera equipment. Uh, but this was my first backpack in, uh, in almost two years. And so uh, I was very excited uh, because I, all, I, for the first time in 30 years, I was without pain because of this uh, last surgery uh, giving me a titanium hip. But uh, then, uh, so at the trailhead, you can see all the signs and notices and the instructions about how we're supposed to uh, help uh, keep this a wilderness area. Um, mainly, uh, leave no trace is the main rule of the game. Uh, and there's the register. You can see those uh, that registered uh, to that day. Uh, 
And then the uh, sign uh, indicating uh, how far to the various places you can go from from here. And then on up the uh, the trail, uh, 100 yards, maybe 200 yards. I, I you come to a little bridge uh, across the across the creek. Uh, and remember, now we're on uh, June 20, June 13th, uh, 2013. And here, this is the way it was on June 28th in 2011. It was a raging torrent coming down that canyon. Um, and back to reality, and then up the canyon. Uh, to the wilderness area and uh, remind us again of the uh, the rules of the game and there I was not walking like a penguin anymore or a duck but going up the trail uh, feeling yes tired often and needing rest every 10-15 minutes or so but hey it was really incredibly uh, wonderful to be able to uh, go up that trail because I wondered a few months ago whether I would ever be able to do it again. Uh, along the way, of course, I, I go slow enough to notice all the beautiful things. Uh, this is uh, one, one variety of daisy. Um, and then there's this other life form, which I haven't really identified yet. And then there's the... Uh, the uh, uh, what, what I have called the... Uh, uh, the textures of nature uh, uh, that, that I notice, and you'll notice some of these uh, will probably end up being frames for some of my business cards uh, not in, the, in the not too far distant future. Uh, uh, I've got to hurry along. Uh, this uh, is another of the early flowers, Spring Beauty. Uh, and it's a very tiny flower. Most people don't notice how beautiful it is, but this I've zoomed in on for your enjoyment. And then uh, you start seeing Glacier Lily, another very exotic flower. And then I started running into more high you win a new high you win a friends uh, Bob and his wife uh, from Hawaii and he of course was uh, uh, trying to convince me of the uh, glory of trekking poles and this would double uh, my effective life etc of course I have my arguments about trekking poles um, and I'll mention that in, in a moment uh, up the trail the first water you come to uh, as you get up near the pass uh, you first go through a little patch of snow the, this is the first patch of snow you usually hit uh, but when I came down it was almost gone it was the only patch of snow on the whole trip uh, but there at the uh, this uh, little stream that comes across the trail uh, you see marsh marigold and other the early flowers and then you one that's very in flower very similar to it which is the white globe flower and in these marshy areas you also see this false hillebore which uh, becomes a very uh, a giant plant uh, and then, uh, then uh, up near the pass, I ran into more high you a friend. These are what I call trophies that I was brought back. Uh, my trophies are all these wonderful new high you a friends. And this was Mike Slater and his family from uh, Salem, Utah. Uh, he works uh, in Springville at the uh, uh, what I call the fishing game. Uh, you can. <laughs> The complicated name they call it nowadays I don't like much fishing game is good enough for me um, up uh, uh, up at the pass uh, which is uh, like 10,000 six seven hundred feet uh, uh, you can see there's just no snow at all dry and then you're over into the granddaddy basin we've seen Heart Lake uh, and East Granddaddy Mountain and uh, on East Granddaddy Mountain of course I've been up to the top of that mountain three times uh, bivouacked where that uh, black arrow is to get pictures like this one here and then uh, in 2007 after my uh, football ankle was reconstructed I sidestepped up uh, up this uh, to the edge to the bottom of the cliff where you see the yellow of arrow uh, to get uh, a picture well this picture which uh, I've used quite a bit then I got to Grande Lake and I uh, I wanted to observe again the uh, native cutthroat spawn which always fascinates me and so I got a few pictures there and made my camp and the next day uh, got ready to go uh, with a slug of eggnog uh, to fuel me uh, along and uh, I was off and soon I met uh, John Maynard um, he was up there uh, after some Boy Scouts that he was going to help get out of the mountain. Uh, they were, t he was to find them over at Lodgepole Lake. 
But, uh, so John, he signed in also as a new high you and a friend, and then uh, we parted company um, at this uh, cross pass path or cross trail um, where the, uh, the, the trail, uh, one goes to, on to Lodgepole and the other one goes over to Betsy and on across the whole basin. Uh, there I met uh, Ken, a forest uh, uh, service uh, employee hauling uh, items in to set up a camp for the wilderness uh, uh, workers, uh, wilderness uh, rangers, I guess we can call them, uh, that would be working on uh, clearing the trails. Um, and so then on uh, past Betsy Lake and to the uh, cross trail where the, where the road uh, or the path uh, takes off to uh, across the basin. Uh, and it was on that trail towards Rainbow Lake that I, I went. And uh, pretty soon after, oh, half a mile or so, you, you can look, go over to the edge and you can see uh, uh, way uh, towards, well, towards East Granddaddy Mountain. Uh, you can see that Grand Day Lake is up on a, uh, on a sort of a, a ledge up there, and then it drops off uh, to meadows down below, and then across the uh, Rock Creek drainage to the east. And you can, uh, and on the right side of that, you can see uh, a uh, canyon, side canyon uh, up which uh, you can get to Cabin Lake, and on over a little pass to uh, Rudolph uh, Lakes. And then on the uh, uh, northern side of that mountain that's in the middle um, is Squaw Basin and then up to uh, Cleveland Pass and Cleveland Peak uh, and so that's uh, towards the east. And so down I went uh, feeling incredibly good and, and also lucky that there were no, no mosquitoes yet. Uh, uh, this is the one of the wonderful things of going early in the season. Uh, and I finally got to the trail that turns off to Palisades Lake, which was my objective, and, and headed up there and set up my little camp uh, and uh, then tried some fishing. Uh, caught a few uh, brook trout, enough uh, for my dinner. And then uh, up early the next morning uh, to get pictures as the sun uh, came up. But I made my call to Utah Outdoors Radio. Um, I run by uh, Tim Hughes, and uh, I talked to Russ Smith, who uh, from satellite uh, or uh, Sky Call uh, Satellite uh, provides me with a satellite phone. So I had a nice conversation on the radio with them. Uh, you should go to him to get uh, a satellite radio uh, or satellite phone, uh, spot trackers, such things. Uh, I got a few panoramas in as the day uh, uh, warmed up. And then I started breaking camp, and I left my spot without any trace, as you see here. And then one last panorama with full light. And then looking across, uh, you can see the cliffs, and those are the palisades uh, that uh, give this lake the name that it has. Um, palisade uh, can mean a line of lofty, steep cliffs, and I guess that's what we're looking at here. And I wanted to go across and cast off of them, and so I headed around, you know, getting pictures of uh, Alpine Buttercup, one of the several varieties in the winners, and then uh, Bog Laurel along the edge of the lake. And uh, out in the lake, uh, uh, lily, uh, uh, pond lilies uh, working towards the surface, they would become like this here. Uh, and then as you see uh, me working around the lake, uh, another reason why I don't have trekking, uh, use trekking poles is that I, uh, if I'm not carrying my camera in my hands, I'm carrying my fishing rod in my hands. And if I don't have either of those, I have a bag of munchies in my hands. So I have other things too with my hands. But I cast off the cliffs or off the palisades and I thought I had a big fish on that it was because I hooked him in the tail as you see here uh, and then I was uh, down the trail and soon ran into a group of students from the University of Utah led by Hillary and had a great conversation with them telling them about my old buddy uh, that uh, at 16 had taken me up brought taking me up into the Uinas and and we've continued to be backpacking friends and he but he went on to the University of Utah for 42 43 years and I didn't mention the name uh, but I told some stories uh, about all of that um, and then uh, uh, down the trail 
uh, to uh, Broadbent Meadows and to uh, where uh, a little stream out there, and I noticed there was a little brook trout uh, swimming around in it, and then to the uh, uh, cross paths again and headed up. When all of a sudden I heard I was called by name, and there Mike Packard was. And as it works out, of course, my f friend that introduced me to the UN is when I was 16 was his father, Ted Packard. And uh, he was the other half of the group from the University of Utah. And so we had a great time talking. Um, here Mike and his father uh, is uh, with me and a friend on top of Bald, uh, Mount Baldy, or Bald Peak, um, back in 2007. And so I had a nice time talking with, with them. Uh, they had a, a number of foreign students, one from Japan, two from China, one from Slovenia, one from Denmark, and others. And it was a really nice meeting them and adding them onto my list of high UNA friends. And so then I was, uh, was up the trail and uh, uh, in, uh, enjoying myself, uh, to say the least, I, uh, I was just overwhelmed always uh, with that I was a actually able to do this, but I did have to rest often, and at one rest stop, of course, I took pictures of these beautiful, uh, uh, this undergrowth uh, that you see all over the UN. Is I, I've never learned this name yet, uh, but it has a little tiny flower early in the season, and I zoomed in on it for your enjoyment. And then I got a last picture of a panorama, I was looking across to, to the east, and then up uh, to Betsy Lake, where the trail was uh, blocked, uh, by down timber so the trail crews have got work to do and then on to betsy lake and there i uh, got uh, used uh, my new water system purification system and i'll show it to you here it's uh, uh, a Sawyer's uh, squeeze system, uh, so you blow up the, uh, I blow up the, the one water container that you fill with water from you, the lake or the stream, and, uh, and then you pour, pour, you pour it, uh, fill it up with water, and then you screw in the filter, and then you turn it over and you start uh, squeezing, and as you as it uh, empties, you roll it. I, I roll it and squeeze it at the same time until I have my water bladder filled with pure water. And I was of course working right in the middle of a whole bunch of uh, whole garden of uh, bog laurels, uh, and then uh, I was on to. Uh, uh, Granddaddy Lake and up over the pass down the other side and down near the uh, uh, trailhead I ran into this beautiful couple uh, they were on their way to Hades Lake which I had forgotten about Hades Lake I, I, I acted like I such really didn't exist but I remember now and uh, but it's uh, fairly near the trailhead but it you have to go across a bunch of boulder fields to get to it and so I'm uh, hoping to hear from them uh, how they did getting there and and uh, and I guess I've got to go there too one day soon uh, but what fuels me, uh, along, uh, among other things, uh, you see all these supplements and vitamins, and, and there's other places on my website where I talk about the, the, these various uh, supplements that really help me and make possible in my 78th year doing what I'm doing. Uh, but I made it back to the trailhead, and then on down to refresh myself in that beautiful uh, gushing uh, uh creek that comes over or stream that comes off the mountain and then uh, down to uh, Hannah uh, all this ranch country and to the country store for a little bit of refreshment uh, there of course you can even stay overnight there are rooms across the street but what I wanted to do of course was visit the uh, museum that's right next door which I've always wanted to do but I never have done so uh, owned and run by uh, uh, Snooks Roberts and um, but I found that uh, he had uh, died last year uh, at 98 but his wife was still alive she said she'd show me the museum and it's unique as you see here uh, but uh, Tracy uh, opened it up and showed it to me and I'll show you just one picture here I'll actually make a post of this uh, museum for your enjoyment but there you learn um, some of uh, about Tracy's father, who was one of the original uh, in this area. His name was Frank DeFay. This area was known at one time as Little Italy, as it was uh, 
populated by people from Italy. And uh, her, her father, I'll tell you, is one color, colorful fellow that I'm going to tell some stories about when I write my book. But I'm grateful for Tracy uh, having showed me this uh, this museum, which is one of the most unique museums I have ever seen. Uh, so here she is, uh, younger, with uh, her husband, Snooks. And so remember, uh, this is a museum, one of its kind in the whole West, uh, that you should go see. Uh, there, uh, there's a picture of uh, Chief Tabby, um, after whom... The next town down the road, Tabiona, is named, and I will also have a post on Tabiona. And from there, I went on down along the Duchesne River, uh, all the way to Duchesne, uh, seeing the oil developments, all the ranching, and all this fascinating country uh, that everybody should uh, should see. Uh, so this is my first trip. My uh, uh, upcoming will be. Uh, a post, maybe a YouTube video, on the most unique museum west of the Mississippi, and then a town named after Chief Tabby, on to Deschain, and then the story of my backpack number two, which will be chasing the tie hackers in the mysterious middle fork of Black's Fork. So, there you go. Keep an eye on my website, and I will be with you again soon.